I appreciate the opportunity to visit uh, with Secretary Granholm. I want to get back to energy. Um, diesel fuel in Montana is 544 a gallon, okay? There's a little tax on that, but it's 544 a gallon, which is a lot. And, and we've got a situation right now where um, energy companies are making record profits. They're doing stock buybacks. They're charging the hell out of the consumer and, and quite frankly, uh, uh, blaming a lot of different issues. One fact is, is that if, uh, if they quit using this war as an opportunity to jack up prices, um, I think we'd see a, a better, a, a better uh, situation for the consumers. Uh, we also see uh, last year, for example, everything west of the Mississippi being in a drought. Everything east of the Mississippi had more water than they needed. I happen to be one of those guys west, west of the Mississippi, and we had the worst crop we've ever had in the history since my grandfather homesteaded it in 1910. We didn't cut, but a small, small fraction of what we normally cut and harvest. So climate change is a problem, and choices for consumers is a problem right now. Because quite frankly, I can't put anything but diesel in my truck or my tractor, and and I'd like to be able to, I'd like to be able to run it on batteries, okay? I'd like to be able to run my field tractor on batteries. Now, this ain't a 30-horse tractor. This is a 375-horse tractor. I'd like to be able to run it on batteries. I'd like to be able to take my farm at some point in time and take it off the grid and have solar and wind and put that into batteries and be able to run my farm off batteries, okay? Because I got great wind resources, trust me, where I live. The question becomes, you as visionary, somebody who takes your job quite seriously as Secretary of Energy, is what does this budget do to move the ball forward in new, uh, new generation that doesn't add to climate change, in battery technology, in carbon sequestration to try to be better and cheaper with that on existing plants, in making nuclear waste benign? enlighten me, because I'm going to tell you, I'm 65 years old, I got about another eight or 10 years left on the farm, God willing. And in that 10 years, I want to have a tractor that I can't hear, because it's got an electric motor. <laughs> I want you to have that, and I think you will have that, really, because we have this, first of all, technology is the answer, right? We are focused on so much of the advances you've just described, whether it's on battery or on wind and renewables or on carbon capture sequestration or on biofuels or on advanced vehicle technology. All of that is encapsulated within the energy efficiency and renewable energy increase that we're asking uh, for this committee to support uh, and for the, for, the whole, uh, for the whole budget. But it's also reflected in the bipartisan infrastructure law that, uh, that you were supportive of as well. So carbon capture, for example, there's $10 billion uh, in that bipartisan infrastructure law for, for carbon capture. So, so the question is, is the, the real question here is, we've made some investments, but the status quo continues to be $5.44 diesel yep. fuel. The status quo is not an affordable battery right now. It's not a battery big enough. It's not a bad, the, it, there's all sorts of problems there. The status quo is carbon sequestration costs a bunch of money. If we can lower those costs, we can lower costs for consumers. Does this budget, have adequate dollars in it to invest in the kind of things that we need for a 21st century energy portfolio? Yes, it absolutely does. It invests in the research and, and deployment and development that will get us away from that. I mean, does this bring down the price of gas right now? No, but it invests in the technology that will get us to the point where you can have a tractor that you can't hear. Well, I can say this. It doesn't matter what field you're in. If there's competition in the marketplace, the, the consumer gets a fair shake. And uh, I've got a number of bills in the beat packing industry, but you're not Secretary of Ag, you're Secretary of Energy. Truth is, there's no competition there. And I don't think there's near enough competition in the energy sector. And if we can develop some of these, um, these resources that, by the way, benefit both carbon-based fuels and non-carbon-based fuels, I think it's a step in the right direction. And you're the right person to do that job. Thank you very much for doing it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator. The chair is pleased to call on the ranking.